So I would love to hear a bit about the like lyrical inspiration that came into play as far as telling the story of this song and how it evolved for you. Yeah, it's a funny one. The, the lyrics, first thing is that I'd come off a string of writing a load of very downbeat numbers, if we're honest, that were halfway to being miserable. And I actually wanted to write something a bit more upbeat and quirky. And I saw somebody do a performance on Instagram of something really quirky and jokey lyrics. I thought, I'll do a bit of that. I picked up the guitar and I started putting something together a bit, what I thought was Ed Sheeran-esque, with these jokey lyrics. And honestly, they just didn't work at all. They turned out being nasty rather than jokey. I liked the bit about, you know, the bottom of the complicated heart and sending out the letter. And I just thought, right, OK, I had this idea of then twisting it round so that actually he was sending out the letters for what he thought was a good reason, which was to break up with her for her own good. And then the lyrics evolved from there and became about this person who's obviously very insecure and obviously got issues and um, no self-worth and all this kind of lovely stuff, but in a kind of slightly jokey, up-tempo way. Yeah, oh, you know, I actually didn't quite know the Inception part of it. That's really cool. Yes, because <laughs> I think really the lyrics cool. initially were. He was very dismissive about the fact that most of what was in the letter was true. I checked it over and most of it was true. So I just sent it out to everyone but you, was the original lyric. And of course, when I changed the idea of the song to being about trying to break up with somebody in what they thought was a good way, I changed it to the core of it is true instead of most of it was true, which completely changed the sense of the lyric. Going into the chorus was just, I don't know, I'm one of those writers, I'm more of an inspirational writer rather than an architectural one so they come to me rather than me carefully working out I'm going to use this chord progression because it's going to do this it just comes are there things that you think you do in the process of getting to that space where the inspiration comes or is it like three in the morning you just and then you're off it to varies the it's usually about yeah, it is actually, funny enough, three o'clock in the morning, usually. With this one, I actually intentionally sat down because I saw this Instagram performance from somebody and had seen Ed Sheeran doing a live acoustic version of, of one of his songs, just him and a guitar. And I thought, that's great. So I just picked up the guitar and, and thought, I'm going to do something like that. And a rhythm came to mind and um, the words came on top of it. So either they come at 3 a.m. and I have a melody in my head, which I then have to get out of bed and go and stick on my voice recorder. Very rarely with words, actually, usually melody. Or or I sit down intentionally to write a song and I don't know what it's going to be about. I sit down, I write something usually on piano, it's unusual for me to write on guitar. I noodle around until something nice falls out and then I develop it and then I sing something over it and I randomly see what words come to me and then I tend to just write a story around whatever random rubbish has come out of my mouth the first time round. Funny thing is, usually it tends to end up sticking, so the first thing that comes out does tend to be the core of the song occasionally I've completely thrown away the words I wrote originally and ended up with something completely different but not often. That's cool. A lot of the people that I respect a lot in songwriting have that same instinctual process to it. So that's oh, cool. Yeah, is there anything else like song-wise, story-wise or anything else that you think would be important to outline for people in your process of making the song? One of the things that usually takes the longest is just actually fine-tuning the notes of the melody and the lyrics actually often take a long time to get right. I'm very particular about my lyrics, especially my more poetic ones. This isn't one of my poetic ones, but equally crafting those so that every word is right can take a long time. You have a first draft and then you can go over it for weeks or months sometime until actually finally the right words. And the same is actually true of the melody. If you go back to when I first wrote it, and I do have a video performance of it, which nobody needs to see. I've checked it over, and I'm pretty sure that most of it is true. And though I'm not convinced that it's the kindest thing to do, I sign it off and send it out to everyone but you. It's not really different, but it's just different. It's just like the, often the grace notes here or there are just subtly different. It's often something you, I don't think that you can write when you first write something. You have to let the process evolve. You have to let it sit in your head for a bit and then come back to it and go, oh no, actually that note would be better there. And the other thing is taking the time to, once you know how the song flows, is keeping it interesting. And so yeah. something that I almost always do is I vary the melody and often the rhythm of the lyrics 
as I go through. So I often repeat it for the first couple of verses, but then after that I start subtly just shifting it around. It's just in order to keep the listener's attention, you know, like you do when you're shaping a production. Cool, okay, oh, that was awesome. So the next thing is I send a rough vocal and a backing to John because normally I'm writing on piano and whatever I've written on piano often actually makes it into the final song. But in this one, because I wrote it on guitar and I am terrible guitar, I'm not sure anything of my original backing actually made it into this one. So at which point it goes over to John and John does his magic and comes up with a concept for the production. Yeah, so when we talked about direction for this song, we knew we wanted to take a risk. I feel like all the songs that we end up working on together, a lot of times there ends up being some risky on the edge of the Jakerverse thing mm. that comes into play. And, and this song was no exception. And it was mm -hmm. uh, the dance of finding that. This is a, a very, from the Jakerverse, very poppy. And we still then wanted to have it the flavors of what we normally go with. So our process is super, super collaborative and back and forth where I'll present like a palette of flavors in the first draft and want to see if you like where the dish is going. I feel like that's a good metaphor for it. That's and a very good metaphor for it. And actually one thing that we did on this, you talk about taking a risk because actually we took the tempo right up as well. I think from my original, we thought if we're going to make it poppy, we're going to make this as poppy as I go. I think as you said to me at one point, this is as close to rap as you're ever going to get, which is unkind, but true. So we, we upped the tempo to, to the point where we thought that it was going to work with my voice. I think any faster and it wouldn't have worked, but I think we just hit the sweet spot really it really yeah we jacked up the tempo totally swapped out all the instrumentation still kept the guitar and that's the mainstay instrument of the verse but then in the chorus it, it gets swallowed into this totally different universe for people who don't know who listen to your stuff what we'll do is we'll sit down every single week and talk about updates to the track what things that come up for you things that come up for me and really just talk it out or a brainstorm on different solutions to what we're hearing uh, in the track and this song in particular had a lot of back and forth, especially on a the lot. intro. <laughs> the intro. Yes. What intro, John? My, well, what can you mean? There is no intro now. There's no, a breath. There's no there's intro. A, there's, there's a breath. <laughs> but there was a fantastic intro once upon a time. Yeah, there was actually quite a few. We went back and forth on the intro, didn't we? The best one that we came up with was silence. It was no intro. Yes. Oftentimes, I've found that's the solution. If you can't find a good intro, it's time to get on with it. One of the interesting things that we do is that, despite the fact, obviously, John's in America, various places of America, unpredictable places in America, whereas I'm basically stuck at home, is that John effectively shares his studio session with me. So I see over Zoom and I hear over a very clever plug-in, a proper hi-fi version of what he's hearing in the studio, which is really awesome because then I can collaborate in the process of we tweak notes backwards and forwards, don't we? I suggest just slight changes here and there, but that process is a bit of a game changer really. It's a huge part of, first off, getting things done, but also mm. it's really great to be able to yeah, have you say, talking about changing notes on something, I can change the notes, and then immediately you hear it in context in the mix, as anybody would hear on Spotify or on a CD and, and be able to hear it in that quality and, and we can make mm. decisions really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I often come up with an idea of a way to change a particular bit of the backing and um, it doesn't work. And if we weren't doing it this way, it would take a week to then uh, say, OK, let's put it back or let's try something else. But this way, we try it live until we get something that we're both happy with until next week when I change my mind. All right, so I want to share a few cool things that went into the song that I think people obviously feel but they don't really know are there. So the first part of this that really sticks out is probably what you didn't realize is actually a bass guitar. I think I pitched that, that to you. To put I that think in you did. That is my kind of bass guitar. But I'm pretty sure that I kept on asking you to turn it up. You did, uh, yeah. Make it more and more distorted. It's a little intimidating of a sound to put into a track. It is great. Um, yeah, it's awesome. It fills it up in a huge way. Because without that buzz, it's just so lacking. No point yeah. in trying. No time for crying. No, it's just. And then with it. No point in trying. No time for crying. No, it's just. All right, there's two more things that I wanted to point out specifically that I thought were really sneaky bits that people will have heard in the song mm. as you're just listening to it. And one is actually the presence of a vocoder throughout the entire chorus. No point in trying, no time for crying, no, it's just the way. And it's tucked under. Oh man, even I didn't know that was there. It's one of those oh, things wow. that's very hard to, to pick apart in the mix. 
but mm. for me it just adds like a little bit of that edge this isn't just a vocal with two doubles and harmonies there's a little something right. saucier that kind of tickles the ear and gets you really feeling like it's it's perked up in a new way too mm. on, on top of everything that's really fun it just adds dimension to it Trying, cool. without no time for crying, no, it's, it's just still beautiful, the but it's just way, the way that love is no point in healing. And the amount of echo there is amazing, the amount of delay on it, which I'm, you don't really, I'm never quite aware of in the mix. Apparently. Oh, yeah, it, it is bangingly <laughs> present yeah. in that song. It helps with the balance, and, and it's one of those few situations where that much delay really makes sense. What, one more cool thing I wanted to show you. I'm actually in the background vocals of this song. That's in your, that's in the bridge. It's just the like fizzy part. It's really focused oh, on that yeah. fizzy portion of, of the vocal and it's tucked in underneath all of these ethereal little pads and sprinkly boys going on. So it gets really... Huh. That was actually from the original demo. I got into mixing it. I was like, well, it sounds great and it fits. So why would I call them up and have them rebuild the vocals? A bunch of little ha-hoos when yeah. uh, it's already fizzy and like sitting nice and, and airy. The funny thing is, given my memory, is that I was aware that those harmonies were there, those backing vocals were there, but I had no idea whether I'd recorded them or not. I could easily have done, but it turns out I didn't. You did them. <laughs> How's about that? There we go. There we go. Something that I think is really cool to hear is what a final recorded vocal sounds like before mixing and production elements are on it. People don't often want to show that. So I was hoping it was okay. I could walk people through what yeah, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be scary hearing it dry. Let's do it. So here's where we start. No point in trying, no time for crying. No, it's just the way, the way that love is. And Ooh, that- oh, okay. <laughs> That's just right off the microphone, no compression, yeah. no EQ, no fancy processing. Mm -hmm. And so now here is just the lead and then I'll play with the layers on top of it. No point mm -hmm. in trying, no time for crying, no, it's just the way. Huge difference. Huge, Huge difference. difference. And of course, yes, because I also send you two doubles as well. So I, I basically sing it three times. Uh, everything is sung three times. Just for and the here it is vocal. with those doubles on top to make mm -hmm. it even wider. No point in trying, no time for crying, no, it's just the way, the way that love is. And then yeah. wow. we add layers on top. We have the vocoder layer and we have two harmonies on top of that. No point in trying, no time for crying, no, it's just the way, the way that love is. That's two doubles of harmonies, two doubles of another harmony, both panned out, the vocoder underneath the doubles and you hear lead a vocal all there mixed together, glued in, and something beautiful and lush just support against the onslaught of intensity that the it's track amazing. brings you. You can see just how much work goes into processing that vocal, which is why when I do just my own little things with my piano and vocal on social media and just slap a little bit of reverb on it, why well, it doesn't sound anywhere near as good as the final production, <laughs> because all this work goes into it. And of course, the final thing was that after we'd done all this and um, artwork and everything was distributed out to the, well, distributors, is that of course I changed my mind about the title, because all this time it had been called Complicated Heart. And um, I suddenly realised that actually the way that love is the phrase that keeps on being repeated in the chorus or is the thing that people are going to remember. And it's a song title, would you believe, that had never been used before. Loads of songs called Complicated Heart, not a single other song called The Way That Love Is. I think it was a week before the actual release date. I changed the artwork and resubmitted the new name. And what a good decision that was. When you told me, I actually couldn't believe that was ever not the title. But um, glad we did it. Yeah, absolutely. That's been fantastic. And I think on your own channel, you're going to do um, a video breaking the production down even more. Yes, if you want to go deeper into everything, all the nuances and sonic journey of the song, I'll be doing that over on my channel and would love to have you over there to check that out. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that'd be really cool.